Hello friends, how are we doing today? Okay, we are back for another craft. This time I'm using a calendar page. This calendar was given to us by our petroleum company that comes and does the propane for our stove. Um, so I really like all of these pictures that they have on them. Today I thought I would do something pretty simple. Um, so I got this at Dollar General, no, Family Dollar. I got that at Family Dollar. And then I have this and I don't remember where I got it. It's, I have no idea. It could be Hobby Lobby, could be Walmart, could be Michaels, I don't remember. <laughs> I've had it for a little while. So first thing I'm gonna do is stain this with my trusty Waverly Antique Wax. Love this stuff. I thought about doing a different stain with it, like some sort of color that's in here, but there is a, there, are, there are a lot of browns in here. So I do think it would look nice. I did think about doing a red, but I, I don't know, I kind of want the barn to stand out. I love barns. You guys love barns? I love them. This house is like, the roof is coming off. It's just an old property. So I think we'll stick with this. Uh, and I think I, I like, I like the way the color looks. So it just works just like a stain. I mean, if you guys have followed me or really anybody, all of us crafters use this in this way. Um, I also use it for distressing things. Uh, I use it for all kinds of stuff. Just it's it's a very versatile, well, paint, but it's a wax technically, I guess. But it works really well, and look at how pretty that is. All right, so this time I'm thinking I'm going to use my Tuscan red. I'm going to go ahead and do the home sign in this Tuscan red because it's pretty and it matches. So I just got to find the right paintbrush. What I normally do is just use the cap, um, pop the bubble, but I'll, I'll use the cap a lot of the time. So you can see this is definitely a more muted red. It has uh, more, I don't know, like a brown undertone. It's not a bright red, which is again, one of my favorite reds. Okay, so now let's see, I'll leave that out for now, just in case. See what we're doing. So this is kind of purpley, honestly, when you put it up to this. So like back here matches. This is, this right here is a little bit purpley. I'm wondering if I should paint that with some of this. Because I'm, I'm really gonna distress this picture. It's gonna get crinkled, it's gonna get um, stuff all over it. It's, it's really gonna be distressed. Um, so I'm thinking I might do that. I might go ahead and do some paint over this barn. Not cover it, but just some highlights because putting this together, is this is, this is much more of a purple undertone uh, that I'm not going to use. The door matches really well, but this right here, not so much. So let me just take a little bit and let's just see how it works, right? Why not? And I'm just going to paint it on. See how it works. Actually, it's working pretty well. And I'm not worried about these branches and that stuff that it's covering you, because I'm wiping it and you can still see through it. Um, and like I said, this is gonna get distressed anyway, so all of that is gonna get a di it's gonna be a different color anyway. Like I said, I'm not trying to do full coverage here. I'm just trying to alter this color a little bit and make it not so purpley. I'm just going to follow the lines that, that are already here so it looks as natural as possible. Alright, so I think that's actually pretty good. That That is much, much better because if you look at, see the colors matching better? Much better. And then I'm going to go over it with the antique wax as well. So I really like that. That, that makes me happy. Um, well, we've got to rip it first and then distress it. And I know that it's not going to cover this, um, the wood thing, the, the sign itself. It's not going to cover that fully. I get that. Um, and that's fine with me, but that's part of why I'm ripping this because I don't want clean edges. The fact that it's not going to cover it 
is why I'm doing the ripping part. And I just want these edges. I don't want to cut out this house too much. I don't want to like rip it too far in. I don't want to cut out the barn. So I'm just kind of doing it this way, obviously. There's always a direction that you're doing ripping in that doesn't, comes off in little pieces. I kind of want to keep that. So just keep pulling it off till you get it where you want. And there we go. So that's that. And I think I'm probably gonna like go a little bit lower on this side because that side is lower. Yeah, take off the point. I don't like points with this stuff. I like it, it doesn't have to necessarily be rounded, but I just, I don't want it like pointy. It doesn't look natural to me when it's, when it's got a point. Okay, so I'm just gonna size it real quick. Here's my board, here's my paper. See that? That's gonna look nice. So now, what I kept kind of going back and forth with is do I want it to be in the middle and do this or do I want this over here? I thought about if I put it over here, um, it, this doesn't cover the house as much. It gives it a little bit of interest because it's off center. I'm telling you guys, I'm so glad I did this with the barn. It's, it, it looks good. I hope the camera's picking this up. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is actually distress this first before I start crinkling it up. Because once I crinkle it up, it's going to, I'm going to even do more distressing with my ink pads, which I'm going to get more today, later. Kids and I had doctors today, so we were in there for hours. It's so all three of us, same doctor. <laughs> so, all right, so let's go ahead and, and get this thing distressed more and uh, get it, we'll get it attached. So I kind of like just going little little area. This is wax and not regular paper, like I said, so it's not going to be the same. It's not going to soak in. Like you could wipe that right off if you wanted to. So there, this will get Mod Podged. On these edges here, which I'm loving, those do take it because I ripped the paper. So it's got a ripped edge. So what I'm doing is kind of spreading it around. I don't want all of the brush marks. So as it dries, I just kind of do this like circular motion and it helps to get rid of those. Blends it better. Could also probably take like a paper towel or something. The only problem I have with that is um, it will probably wipe it right off this paper. So we're gonna, just gonna do a circular kind of motion to get it in there. I was trying to find something that was quick to do today. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I allow myself to do that. Nothing's ever quick. I'm just gonna use my finger to blend a little bit, get out the brush marks. It's looking good though, I'm loving it. I'm telling you, using your fingers, guys, it's like one of the best tools you have. If you don't like getting dirty, well, not so great, I guess, but. <laughs> but I use, I use my fingers all the time. It's just, uh, it's much better. It just helps blend really well. Doesn't leave brush marks. All right, now we're gonna do the barn. And again, I'm gonna go lightly on the barn because I have the um, red chalk paint on here and I don't wanna pull that up. It's just because it's the type of paper. If this was like regular paper, copy paper or whatever, it wouldn't do this. You'd be fine. But this is a, a shiny paper with a coating on it. You, got, you know what calendars are on. So you can make it a little darker in places, you know, or you think it would be older looking on the door. That looks good. Ooh, I like it. That barn looks amazing. I'm so sorry I stopped, but look at that. That's so much better. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So now we'll do the same thing with the home sign. So I'm gonna see, I'm not trying to like change the entire color, but I do want it darkened up a little bit. That is so nice. Okie dokie, let's get a piece of sandpaper. And then, oh, see, we're just gonna do the edges. And then we'll come back in with black. Looks nice. 
Okay, so let's, uh, I'm gonna try to crinkle this up. <laughs> and hope it doesn't mess up all the paint that I just put on here. I'm gonna do it gently and see. Squeeze it like, oh, that's working good. Just kind of squeeze it like this. Yay. So now I'm actually gonna do it this way too. Just kind of bending it almost like a fan so that I can grab it and squeeze it. Hey, I'm being careful because I'm not trying to scratch the surface. And if you do, you can always go back over it. So you're seeing, like, see the crinkle marks? It's white. That actually looks really cool. I like that. Just makes it look older. There we go. So what I'm going to do is actually attach this. Now I'm going to put it on here because I'm going to distress it while it's on here because I'm going to end up going around these edges as well. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with what I said and kind of put this off center. And aesthetically it's fine for, for my eye because I've got this here. There's something here. Um, so I think that this actually looks really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it real quick with Mod Podge. Alright, so I've got Mod Podge on here. I finally finished out my other one. So now I'm using this, and I'm going right to the edge just because Mod Podge gives a, um, a sheen, so I don't want it to like stop in the middle of the picture, so I'm, I am going right to the edge with it. Now I'm wondering if I need to, or if I should, uh, cut this with these slats. I don't know. I'm curious. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> Sometimes I like leaving it like I did with my last thing and that's that's for you know a layer basically it's not exactly cut to the the board I might just leave it just for interest because you can see it elsewhere that heart one I did that one I cut it it was a tile I cut the slats out but I don't know I don't know all right, it's all dry. It looks really cool. It's all got wrinkles and stuff on it. I like it. So I, I'm using my ink pad first, just kind of seeing how this goes. And I'm going along all these edges, but then you see, I don't know if you can see all these wrinkles in here. I'm just rubbing right on top of those. And it's just gonna highlight the actual wrinkles. So I'm not one who likes to get rid of the wrinkles. I like the wrinkles. I think they add all the character to the piece. Um, so I'm like really liking this. And it's easier to do this now that the uh, Mod Podge is on here. But I am going to go in around these edges here of the paper and I'm going to do more. And these are just regular ink pads. These are like permanent ink. It says Stampabilities Acid Free Ink Pad Pigment. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's normal ink pad. Alrighty, so let's grab this home thing and go over this with a little bit of black. I'm going over the top, but also the edges, some of the edges, not all of them, because I did sand and I want some of that to show through still. But just again, giving it another layer of distressing. I just think it looks interesting. I just, you know what I mean? It makes things look, if you, if you want it to look old, you, you gotta make it look old. It's just, it's just the way it is. What do you guys think? Do you agree with that? Alrighty. So now we are gonna do home. And again, still deciding if I wanna do any kind of bow. I could do here, I could do something here, maybe here, so that this isn't interrupted, and also visually. I'm thinking I will do some kind of bow. Could be just a messy bow. I don't. I don't need like the perfect looking bow because it's. This is not perfect. Um, and put it here for visually because I've got this home on this side. The paper is on this side for the most part, but it also does go into this side. And then we have this big part over here. So visually, a bow right here would work. 
So that's probably what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do right now, though, is glue this on. And then, uh, and then I'll work on, on the bow. So I don't want this like in the middle or at the top. I kind of want this at the bottom here. So I, it, you can still see this house. And I'm going to use the E6000 and my hot glue again. Again, I sell my stuff, so I need to have it not fall apart. <laughs> so the E6000, you don't have to worry about time-wise. You're just... It doesn't dry right away. I use it. This is the permanent fix, and then I will put hot glue, and that is the temporary fix that holds it on until this dries. And I feel like I have something going on with my throat. Just... <clears throat> it's a little bit sore, but I have... Uh, I don't know, sound weird. Maybe because I've been talking all day with the doctors. Aiden, uh, they heard a heart murmur on him today, so they did an EKG, and that's fine, but they want to do an echo on him, so that kind of frazzled me a little bit because I have a son, my other son, who has heart disease. He was born with it. So, you know, surgeries and things like that, but... I don't think it's that serious. I hope it's not that serious. So all I gotta do is wait for the call and take them in. I've had these done a few times because of my own heart issues. So, but I don't have like a, like I get palpitations and I get, you know, that kind of thing. I don't have like AFib or anything like that. I had Lyme disease years ago and it really, kicked up those palpitations it, it like I get irregular heartbeats and then it's like stops and almost like skips a beat and when it does that it doesn't beat for like one or two times and then all of a sudden kicks in and, and does a really hard beat and goes back to normal but I don't get dizzy with it I don't have any of that stuff so so far so good all right guys what are we thinking on this I think that's pretty I think now I need to put a bow, but it needs to really be a distressed bow. And this is a barn, so I could do like any of this. The, the check, that match is fantastic. I could put some black in there. Um, any of this stuff, really. So I think that's probably what I'll do. Just make a, a quick bow. All right, so we are gonna go in with a messy bow. I just feel like it fits I feel like it fits the, the sign because the sign is extremely distressed. It's, I just like it. I think that's what we're going to do. I could do a regular bow on top. I've, I've been liking those lately, but let's just, let's just do it and we'll go from there. Okay. So let's go ahead and build this bow. This is just the basic messy bow that I make. Um, and we have one extra cause we're doing two colors in this. So I'm doing that. Um, actually, so in between these, I'll do I got the red, and I'll do flower sack, and then I'll do the black, and then we'll go in with the cheesecloth, and we start over. I've got drop cloth, red, oh, wrong way, red, flower sack, black, cheesecloth. Remember, keep those strings, guys. Keep them, keep them, keep them. I can't stress that enough. I have people asking me all the time about it, and I, I just, did you keep the strings? Did you, because they're saying that they, they can't get it messy enough. It doesn't look like mine. So I'm always asking, you know, did you keep them? Like, these are strings that fell off of this flower sack. I'm putting that in there. Absolutely. So we got the flower, I mean, not flower sack. This is the uh, drop cloth. All right, so we're going with the red. And this is one, two three layers and I go to eight layers with these it seems to be pretty thick for what I'm using it for so flower sack and then black there we go so now I get my twine and we will tie this off if I can find it now this one's a little bit small but we'll make it work so when you order these from me this twine that I put on here to tie it with it's usually longer so that it's easier for you, but this is just the piece I had right now. And that's just simply so you can hold them and shake it out. Gotta shake out your bow. 
and now comes the time where you're going to trim it. See, that's it. you could trim this and leave. I made a project now where I actually left the bow like this. So like this mound like this, I trimmed it out. <clears throat> that was the uh, fresh eggs sign that I made a few days ago. So then I will distress this and then put um, a button on it. And that would be good. I actually have one that I ended up threading and didn't use. So that's this one. It's already even distressed. I don't even have to do it. That works. It's the same exact button. It's just already done. <laughs> This is just distressing the bow. I'm just putting black on it to uh, to distress it more because you get all these new looking pieces like the drop cloth and all that. I mean, all the fabric is new in this case, so I don't want it to look new. There we go. I do plan on going live, guys, by the way. Um, I was thinking I might be able to start even next week. I've got a plan for setting things up because I live in a cabin. I don't have a lot of room. Um, but my shop is also over here. And I'm thinking that if I <clears throat> set it up there, I can actually do this from the shop. And the shop is open on the weekends right now because it's the down season. So I'm thinking I could do that. What do you guys think? Would you like me to go live on, on Facebook? Let me know. All right, so let's attach it, and I think that's going to be the end of this one. I think right here is fine. It doesn't cover the barn. Yeah, I think that's fine right there. So we're going to go ahead and attach that just with some glue. Glue holds really well. And then the, once it's attached, how you can fluff it up is literally fluff it with your fingers. Something that I always do is I distress around um, my words. So kind of like I did this picture, I want to do the words. So it's not a lot, but I just take like the black and I go in. And it's just really, it's more of, again, another layer, but it's like, think about something old that you find, you know, in a, an antique store where the edges, that, like in those, those creases and all those little crevices, dirt builds up and, and uh, dust builds up. That's, that's what I'm going for here. That's the look I'm going for. So that's, I kind of do that pretty much with all of my projects. If I have a, some, something like this or a picture or something like that. So I'm literally just tucking this in and going around all the edges of this word. Just again, another layer. That's like the, that's like my word of crafting layers. So it's a pretty dry brush. I'm really just wanting to have that faded black on there. I'm not trying to get a solid color. All right, yeah, see, I like that. That just, it just kind of adds a layer and, and outlines the word. You know what I mean? Just makes it look like it was supposed to be there, been there the whole time. What do you guys think of that? So that's it. We are done for this one. Okay guys, as always, this will be up in my Etsy shop, um, so if you're interested, you can head over there, and it is Country View Homestead on Etsy, and the link is everywhere. It's going to be in this video, it's in the description, it's on Facebook, it's all over the place, so if you are interested, head on over. Otherwise, thank you for joining me, and I'm just going to keep messing with this bow, it's what I do, <laughs> and uh, if you're not subscribed, please do.